miss a meal today. Of course, everybody knows that she lost her daddy. And, uh, we are going to be in First Corinthians. I believe it's chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. And basically what this chapter is before I get into it is about us being laborers uh, together with God. And this chapter talks a lot about denominationalism. And we know that the world is full of, of denominationalism today. Yes. Um, but the thing about it is we have one God. And we have the Holy Word of God and nothing else. And that's all that we should be going by is God's Word. Yes, amen. Um, but there's so many divisions among the body of Christ today. Um, shoot, there's no telling any different religions that we've got. But uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 1 10 says, uh, uh, Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God. And it, what it talks about is not to let there be any division among you, but be of the same mind and the same judgment. And I think about this church every time I, I read the scripture. Uh, because what's so fantastic about it is we have so many students in here that love the Lord enough to be in this Bible. Yes. And so what happens when Satan sends the enemy through the door and, and he will do that. He will use different people that will try to come in and tear apart what we have and disrupt the church. Amen. But, thank God, we've got people, again, in here strong that know what is right and what is wrong and, and what direction we're going and what... Uh, the Word of God says, and I don't have to worry about it because if I don't dip it in the bud, somebody else will. Amen, brother. Um, we have been through, of course, I know Brother Barry and I don't know, you know our history here, but I mean, we've been here for over five years. And uh, my uncle, who has been a minister for over 30 years, and he has witnessed some of the things that has taken place in God's house here, things that would tear a normal church apart. And they would have shut down and just went their own ways. But because we love the Lord and we love one another and we know what we are supposed to do and expected to do as Christians today, that we have withstood the storm and we have been united. It has made us stronger and we continue to grow. So it is so important that there is no division among us. We are all a part of the body of Christ. Yes. This love letter was left for me and you. Yes, amen, brother. I mean, it is the roadmap to how to navigate this life. Yes, amen. Uh, so that's pretty much what this chapter is about. Um, Paul has gone to uh, Corinth and he is teaching. And uh, there's some things going on in the churches there. So that's pretty much what this is about. But uh, So chapter 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, starting with verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Uh, the Word of God, and I say this, I know I say it so much, but it's so true. The Word of God is not being taught today in churches. Yes, amen. They have gotten away from their first love. Yes, amen. Uh, which is 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 11, I believe. But they've left their first love. Now, I've, I've been in that churches all my life. And, and you know, a lot of people say, well, brother, how, how can that be? There's a church on every corner. And I know there's a church on every corner where Brother uh, Barry is. And Lord, for a small town, we got one on every corner in Clifton. Yes. Got one on every corner in Waynesboro. But I challenge you, not that I want you to leave here by no means, Go to a different church and see what's going on in churches today. Yeah, you right. might get one verse of God's Word and then somebody's going to talk for 50 minutes. Yes. We cannot understand God's overall plan if we do not know the Word of God from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Yeah, and those two books work hand in hand together. Yes, I mean, uh, and I'm not, I'm not making fun of this place, but I did go visit a church one time and I, I can't help it. I mean, they're being in the churches that are being taught. It's milk. I call it milk. They're, on, they're still on the baby bottle. And and uh, I went to their adult Sunday school class. I've been wanting to visit this church for a while. So when Brother Randall was t uh, preaching, I decided to just go visit their church. And in their adult Sunday school class, they did Bible drills. And 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 yeah, and you know, like I said, I'm not making I'm not making fun of you, but the point is, folks, how bad it is today. 
I mean, we, we've got people, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 year old Christians that are still babies in Christ because they are not being taught the depth that Christ intended for us to know and to learn. <clears throat> All right, so this verse 2. I fed you with milk. Now, see, I, I love the example of this. You've got milk, you've got pablum, and you've got meat. Yes. The milk is when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you obtain baptism. That is the milk. But the problem is, too many churches today are like, that's all they teach. Baptism and, and, saved, and being saved. Baptism and being saved. But that's only the first step. Yes, amen, brother. See, when somebody gets saved with me, I don't, not saved with me, but just saved with God and I get to help lead them into that, I'm not like most preachers because I give them a warning. I say, now look, this is the first step. Yes, amen. But now you've got Satan's attention. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Because he just lost one. That's right. And, and, and they send them out into the world after they've been saved. Boy, they're like a little puppy. I mean, they're just running in the, 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 the tails of the wagon. They're all excited and carried on. They don't know why. Do you remember that time when you were saved? Yes, you don't know why you're so excited. But the problem is, the preachers are not teaching them that when they get out of the world, they're going to be kicked around a little bit. Yes. So... Anyway, so I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. He's saying that's all you've been taught is salvation and baptism. He says, I couldn't teach you anymore. Right. And Paul was really kind of disappointed because that's all they knew. Uh, you know, things are no different today than they were back then. Yes, amen, brother. <clears throat> A lot of people just don't have eyes to see and ears to hear. Yes. Uh, Romans 11 8 says, uh, basically, God says, I will give them the spirit of slumber, that eyes that they should not see and ears that they should not hear. Yes. I bring that point up to you because that's how much God loves his children. Yes, it is. And you might say, well, why would God do that if he loves his children? Because he knows they can't handle it. And it's for their own protection. All right, verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Denominationalism. Alright? You cannot live in the ways of the world and expect God to bless you with the deeper truths of His Word. Yes, amen. <clears throat> amen, brother. I'll tell you what, I, this Word is so powerful. Yes, it is. I mean, it heals. It can actually heal a person. This Word is so powerful. Yes, it is. And when you love something, do you not want to spend time with it? I mean, you know, if you, I, I use the example all the time, Brian, you know, practicing his guitar and stuff. I said, well, he practices all the time because he loves playing, right? Yes. So he spends time in the thing that he enjoys. Yes. Well, if you love God, should you not want to spend time with Him? Yes, amen. And exercise your mind in the Word of God. Yes. And don't ever use the excuse, brother, you don't understand. I, I just can't understand it when I'm reading it. It says in the book of James, if you pray for understanding, God will give it to you Hallelujah. liberally. Yes. Yes. If you don't understand it, He'll lead somebody to you and, and to help you to study it and help you to understand it. So don't ever, ever use that as an excuse. For while one saith, I am Paul, and another, I am Apollos, are ye not carnal? Hey, we're not supposed to be following some man. That's right, Th this ain't the church of Jimmy. Nope. That's right. It ain't the church of Randall or Brian. This is the house of God. Yes. That is what we are focused on. Yes. I am absolutely nothing without God. Yes. Yes. The talent that I have to stand up here and do this is from God. Yes. Yes. Verse 5. Who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom ye believed even as the Lord gave to every man? God puts the words in my mouth. Yes. Now, Brian got to teach Wednesday night for the first time and did a fantastic job. And I know he knows what I'm talking about because once you get up here and you submit yourself unto the Lord and you let Him speak through you, did you feel it, brother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There's things come out of my mouth sometimes scare me, you know, <laughs> but it ain't me that's doing the speaking. Amen, brother. <clears throat> now, that does not mean that we don't have to do our part. Now, just because God used me to speak through me up here today, I still have to study. Yes. I still have to spend time yes. with Him. I still have to do my due diligence yes. so that He has something to work with. Yes. Right. He can't work with me and I say, well, I ain't going to read my Bible and study it. Then I'm going to give you a sermon of 50 minutes and not read none of God's Word. Yes. 
That's what would happen. Alright, verse 6. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Yes. That is that is what happens. We are supposed to plant seeds. Yes. Seeds of God's Word. If you've ever read the parable of the soul, the first part. You cannot take a T-bone steak because I just got to saying there, there is the meat of the Bible and then there's the milk of the Bible. You cannot take a T-bone steak and come in here and cram it down the congregation's throat. And that's what Paul is saying here. He could not teach them the meat because they would be lost. Yes. They had no idea what was going on. So therefore, as a teacher, you have to bring yourself down to the level of the understanding of the congregation. Yes, that's right, brother. As a teacher, you have to, I have to teach the meat, I have to teach the pattern, and I have to, to teach the meat. Yes. Because we are all at different levels that's right, brother. And, and walks with our Word of God. Yes, amen. <clears throat> I love the, uh, it's talking about God watering it. It's that former and that latter rain. Yeah. And I love the analogy as far as nature goes. You know, you get up in the morning, there's a, there's a dew across the ground, and that waters those plants, and it waters those seeds, and they start to grow. And that's related to us as Christians. We start to grow and to bloom into this beautiful, beautiful plant. But as you grow, you need more nurturing. Your, your roots have got to go deeper. Yeah. So then when that latter rain comes, that is being mature and coming to maturity in the Word of God. Yes. That's how we grow stronger as Christians today. Yes, no, it doesn't do you no good to come sit in church in a pew every week and never open your Bible. That's right. Man. It don't do you no good. James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Yes, right. Too many pew potatoes out in the world today. And I know that that offends them when I say it, but I'm sorry. It's just not going to cut it. You're not going to understand what's going on in the world today. You're not going to understand when the return of Christ is if you don't know the Word of God. Right. Too many people not being prepared today. <clears throat> Alright. Where was I? Where did I leave off there? Verse 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Psalms 127, 1 says, Except the Lord, except the Lord build the house, they that labor, labor in vain. That's right, brother. Okay, we have got to put God at the forefront of our ministry. God builds the house, He chooses the congregation. It's, it's Him. We get so many visitors coming in and out that door. I can get up here and be the best preacher that anybody's ever seen, but it's up to God whether they want to be here. Yeah, right. He picks the congregation. We do not. He chooses the ministers. He chooses the teachers. Um, not all are called by God, and some chosen. That's right. All right. Let's see here. Verse 8. Now, he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Yes. Too many people have taught today. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe. Baptism and salvation. James 2.20 says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? That's right, man. Now I know a lot of you have read the parable of the talents. The one that had the one talent, he hid it within himself and he did not use it. Yes. We are absolutely worthless and useless to God if we don't take what we have learned and spread the gospel of God in the world. Yes, amen, brother. It says if you just get that one. Yes. You, you, you can make somebody's day and shake their hand and say good morning. You can see when somebody's upset say, hey, is there anything I can do? You can give a listening ear. It don't take a lot. It really doesn't. And, and planting that seed, they're going to think, man, that Randall's a really nice guy. He's always smiling. Every time he comes in here, he's always shaking. He makes me feel good. And they're going to think, what's different about you, brother? And he can say, well, I love the Lord. Yes. That seed. Yes. Amen. That's all it takes is that seed. Verse 9. For we are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. Ye are the building, or God's building. Yes, amen. <clears throat> we are His temple. Now see, people think when they talk about Christ coming and destroying the temple and He's going to rebuild it in three days, they're thinking in the physical sense. Yes, we are building the body of Christ in the temple each and every day. Each and every day. Every time we bring one into the fold, into a relationship with God today. And man, we are in a fierce battle today. 
we've got to get more people, we've got to get more people and introduce them into uh, our relationship with God. <clears throat> There's not one job that everybody in this church that, that you do that is not part of this ministry. Amen. Yes, amen. I don't care if it's you making sure there's toilet paper back there in the bathroom when somebody comes to visit the church and they go back there and have toilet. You think that's silly, but that's part of it. the cooking, the cleaning, yes, the amen. working, the supporting, it all, it's not just me, it's all of us. Yes. All of those things push God's ministry forward. Yes. And each and every day when I pray, each and every morning, I pray for this church. I pray for the leaders, the teachers, and the people that work in this church. Because not one person does it together. We labor together. <clears throat> Number 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. Let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. We have got to be wise in the Word of God. The foundation is Jesus Christ in this Word and building upon that foundation which is spread in God's Word. Yes, amen, brother. Folks, there are a lot of false teachings going on in the world today. I mean, I hear some of the crazy stuff and I, I, I'll just use this one example. A, a veteran had called me up. I, I can't even remember where he lives now. And he wanted to be baptized. He says, man, I've gone around, I've been talking to different ministers and churches, and he says, uh, asking them, he don't have a way to church because he's disabled. First of all, I want to know if somebody could help him get to church. Nobody would. That's sad in itself. But, but what I'm getting at here is the false teaching. He, uh, so he talked to a couple ministers about being baptized, and they said, well, um, you know, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? He said, yes, I have. And he said, uh, he says, well, describe that. What was that moment like? He said, well, the woman that gives me my care my health giver, she helped me enter into this relationship with God. They told him, no, they couldn't baptize him because a woman helped him come to salvation with God. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, that's sad. It is sad. And that's just scratching the surface of the things that are going on in the world today. And why people are being run out, of, run out of churches in the droves. Because of the lack of knowledge of the Word of God. And people coming up here and standing behind these pulpits to teach from the desires of their own heart. Yes, and put that over on you from their bad experiences yes, and their past experiences. Yes, instead of teaching the Word of God. Yes, it Ignorance. Yes, it is. To, de de to deny somebody asking for baptism because a woman helped him come to salvation. Man, that is ridiculous. I hate to see him on Judgment Day yes, uh, standing before God telling that man that. Good. You're going to have some explaining to do. You got that right. All right, verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay that that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Again, false teaching won't stand. Traditions of men will not stand. And that's why so many houses that are mentioned in the book of Revelations will be destroyed when he gets here. He is going to flatten them. They will be shaken to the ground. All right, verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stove, verse 13, every man's work, I'm going to say that again, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. What day? The day of the return of Jesus Christ. Yes. Because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Hebrews 12, 29 says that our Father is a consuming fire. Yes, Alright, so this is talking about the different foundations that these are built upon in the works and what will happen when they are tried by fire. Okay, so what happens when you um, apply the fire to gold? Makes it better. Yes, sir. It refines it. It purifies it. Now, that's an awesome foundation then in it to be built upon. What about precious stones? Well, there may be a few cracks. Get a little bit under the heat, but they'll make it through. What about wood? It's going to smolder. 
That's not the good of works when it's tested by fire. Yes, amen. What about the hail? <laughs> you better stand back, <laughs> uh, folks, because it's not going to last long. And exactly what I wrote down was poof, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. What about stubble? Because that's worse than the hail. Yeah. It don't even make fire. It's a flash in a pan. It's a flash in a pan. Um, but anyway, so if we expect God's blessings, then we have to do things God's way, folks. Right. And our foundation is built on Jesus Christ. Yes. Verse 14. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. That's payday. You know what? Some people's reward ain't going to be too good. Yes, amen. Some, some people's reward is going to be punishment and tried by fire. Now, I'm excited to look forward to that reward. Not that I've not messed up in sin, because we all do. But I at least love the Lord enough to try each and every day to please God. Yes, <clears throat> Again, James 2.20 says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead, yes, folks? Right, how can you, how can you, I don't get it, because how can you possibly <laughs> love God and spend time with Him in word and prayer and then not want to go out and share that? Who, I mean, God's children are lost. Yes. And they are starving to death for a better way of life, folks. Uh, so many people in need today. Uh, it reminds me of this verse right here because we was talking about the pew potatoes and people not doing the work. Is Matthew 7, verse 21. And Jesus Christ says, Many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord. He said, Those that come to me and say, Lord, Lord, shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. That's right. <clears throat> verse 15. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. <clears throat> it will be a pile of ashes. But if you have received Christ, you will still make it. Yes. But you've got to have righteous acts. Here we go about that work again. If you read Revelations 19, 7 and 8, what is the clothing made of that you will wear in heaven? Every stitch... For every time you do something good in this world for somebody, I don't care if it's a smile and a good morning or a handshake, it is every stitch that makes up the righteous acts make the clothing that you will wear in heaven. Now, let me ask you a question. How would you feel to appear before God in heaven but naked? It's not going to be a good feeling. And you will be ashamed. Yes, amen. He's going to look at you and say, why didn't you do anything with the talent that I gave you? Every one of us have a talent, folks. You just got to figure out what it is. I don't care if it's making brownies and, and, and taking it up to the nursing home. I mean, there's so many different things that we can do to try to make the world a better place. One person can make a difference. One person can make a difference. <clears throat> it is not hard to labor for God. Um, I tell you what, I always tell everybody when I'm out witnessing and talking to people, um, the easiest way is to get somebody talking. Of course, everybody uses the weather. Boy, it's been hot outside today, you know. That starts off right off the bat. But then start asking, hey, do you go to church anywhere? You're going to find out whether they've had a bad experience or a good experience. And before you walk away, they will have told you their life story because they have no one else to talk to. Yes, amen. That is one of the easiest tools to use is getting somebody talking about church. And I guarantee you, now, I hate to say this, but nine out of every ten has had a bad experience. Yes, that's right, brother. Um, I, I've used Uncle Doug several times for this. I can't help to use it again. Of course, he's been part of the ministry for five years now. And that's Christy's dad. And of course, this is Christy's mom. But uh, so they started coming to church, or that she was coming to church with us. And I just stopped by his shop one day. And he's out there working, I introduced myself. And we got to talking. Of course, I brought up the conversation in church. He said, visited the church a couple of times. He really liked it. I mean, he's thinking about just staying. He said, and of course, the minister never introduced himself or spoke to him until about the third time. So the minister finally came up to him and said, hey, Mr. Holcomb, or I don't even know if he knew your name. Did you know your name, Doug? Oh, yes. Okay, so he came up and shook his hand. He said, uh, I've noticed you've been coming to church the last several weeks. Uh, we need to get you signed up so you can start tithing. Wow. A lot of money. money. <laughs> exactly. Wow. So, again, my whole point is he liked what God had to say through me to him, and he's been coming to church ever since. Um, it's so, 
don't use an excuse, I can't do this, I can't do that, I'm not. No, you got a talent because God gave each and every one of us a talent yes. and we need to be using it. Verse 16. Know ye not that you are, are in the temple or that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth within you. And so therefore we must set the example as the men are many membered body. Now that's not to say that you're not going to fall short or that you're going to sin, because as long as we're walking in the flesh, you're going to sin. Don't let anybody tell you any different. We try to do our best each and every day. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> And people love to cast and judge stones, especially the people that, that say they're Christians and go to church. I always say, the people outside the church judge the people inside the church by the way the people inside the church act outside the church. They do. They love it. They love it. I mean, you've got to, you've got to be on your toes. You're representing the, the body of Christ. <clears throat> Alright, verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple ye are? That's some serious stuff right there, isn't it? Yes, it is. We are a part of that temple, that many-membered body. And when it says not to defile the temple, he's not talking about your flesh body, but your spiritual body. Yes, amen. Amen. All right, verse 18. Let no man deceive you. Man, do you know how many times that phrase is said in the Bible? I don't, but it's a lot. Let no man deceive you. There's so much deception in the world today. <clears throat> if any man among you seemeth to be wise in the world, and let him become a fool, that he may be wise. Yes. What is a fool? A fool is someone who is void of the Spirit of God and has no interest in a relationship with God, denies God, that is a fool. People get upset when I do these videos and I start talking about fools. They say, well, you ain't supposed to call nobody a fool. I ain't calling nobody a fool. I'm just telling you what one is. Amen, brother. And you are a fool. Why? Because if you do not believe in God and you deny Him, you're going to hell. That's right, but that's why we're not supposed to call them a fool to the face because you are then being the judge and condemning them to hell. But now the word fool is in the Bible and I do talk about it and there's a bunch of them that come to my ministry page. And uh, I mean saying some bad, ugly things about God. I'm like, man, you don't stick the bag. Why I, I think I find told one, I can't wait till judgment day and see you bow and knee before my Father. That's right. Amen. I'm not going to let them talk bad about our God. Amen. Verse 19, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. That's because Satan is the prince of this world. Yes, he is. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. He's talking about wise in the ways of the world. That's right, bro. Verse 20, And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. The flesh, they are empty. Wise again in the ways of the world. 21, Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Hey, if you love God today, if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, what is your inheritance? Everything. That's right, brother. God is your inheritance and He owns everything. Yes, Verse 22. Whether Paul or Paulus or Cephas or Randall or Jimmy or Doug, okay, of the world or life or death or things present or things to come are all yours. It's yours. We set our own destiny. Yes, amen. Man, I try to tell people that all the time. Well, I just don't understand why my life's so bad and everything's falling apart. Well, you better be you better be giving your life to God. And you better be figuring out what it is that you're displeasing Him. We make our own choices. Yes, amen. We determine whether we're going to heaven or hell. We determine whether we're going to be uh, be successful or non-successful. We are determined by the choices that we make in this lifetime. And God, those fools that we were talking about that badmouth Him, and, and one of the biggest things that I love to say, well, if there's a God, how come He lets ministers and blessed boys? Woo! Boy, I'd like to... Mm. You know, fool. That's what they are. 23. And ye are Christ, and Christ is God. You belong to Him. He created your soul. Yes. He loves all of His children, folks. Amen. And He wishes for none to perish. 
And, you know, God loves us so much that, I mean, He's going to do everything in His power to see that each and every one of His children make it into heaven. But you have to leave the milk and come into God's Word. You have to. You have to become mature in God's Word. And then you will see the body of Christ come together one by one. Can I get an amen? Amen.